Welcome to Van for the final leg of a journey that our military rugby players will never forget. The UCAF team has bonded in a way they never imagined by the tragic loss, of course, of Steph Rees. And despite that, they produced an extraordinary performance to push the Fijians all the way in the semi final last weekend. score. We're going to stop from that range to pull back. Yeah. And have they made it? Yes, they have. It's another try for UK Armed Forces. Yeah. Trying to give it a space again. We saw this a little bit in the first half. Can they keep it through the hands? They sure can. who march on to the final of this IDRC, the International Defence Rugby Competition. Well, that 41-29 defeat means that UCAF now take on the Defence Blacks of New Zealand here for third place in the competition. Let's now get the view, shall we, from the home camp, hearing from Dave Manning, the captain, Justin Coleman, head coach, and first of all, a very proud vice-captain, Joe Parkin. Just happy to be starting, really, after coming out here a little bit late, um, off the bench in the semi, and then, yeah, I would have just been happy with a starting spot, but, yeah, it's a massive honour to be vice-captain for this team. And, and Joe, obviously, it's it's been an emotional sort of time for the, all the players but you've got a chance tomorrow yes. to cement that third place which in many ways you so deserve yeah um obviously we're massively disappointed with how we we sort of came off against fiji but like you said we've got a real big opportunity here uh, this weekend to kind of right some wrongs and like you say we've we've had a struggling sort of week um, a couple of weeks ago steph's passing so it's a kind kind of like a last opportunity to kind of do it for steph as well I'm sure that brought everybody together in, in ways that maybe you never imagined that would happen. Um, but I mean, on Sunday last week, it was an extraordinary, really from everyone, you know, not just the UCAF team, but you know, the Fijians and the, and the uh, defence backs as well, the way they all responded. And, and really, all, as a family, you came together as a rugby family. Uh, yeah, massively. The, the military family and the kind of rugby family are two um, huge kind of... Uh, <laughs> families to to come together um, and it was great to see New Zealand laying down that shirt for us and the minute silence that all teams kind of held and the black armbands and things like that. We, we want to win the game, um, there, there's no doubts about it, we were a bit bitterly disappointed with the result against Fiji uh, even though we, we gave it a good crack uh, and we want to get a win over New Zealand tomorrow so um, we're doing everything we can this week in terms of looking at our work on from the Fiji game 
analysing in uh, New Zealand uh, and where we think we can get some dominance hopefully. What parts of the the, uh, the Fiji game you know maybe disappointed you the most because there were some very positive parts to it? Yeah we were slow to get started in the first half so we didn't really stick to our shape and structure we looked a little bit lost and a bit rattled at times with a couple of the early scores so more our composure and sticking to script hopefully from for the first 40 uh, not just the second 40 so we've had two good comebacks against Georgia and then a second half performance against Fiji to a point um, but we want that 80 minute performance now. I mean to be fair there were parts of the Fijian game that no one could have played against. I mean, they, they scored a couple of sensational tries. Yeah, their offloading game was ridiculous. We knew we would do, but I think some of the, the opportunities we gave them, and um, fair play to Fiji, they finished them off, but we're trying to reduce the amount of opportunities that we give to New Zealand because they could be just as lethal. So it's more about us rather than the opposition and, and making sure we um, reduce some of the error count. A lot of people talk about how storied the All Blacks are as a national side. What about the Defence Blacks and what did you guys see from their game against France last week? Yeah, so they were unlucky to lose from France. Um, France were, were good, capitalised on their discipline and, and kicked over all their penalties to eventually win the game, despite being outscored two uh, tries to zero. Um, they look quite good with a, a slow ball, so their forwards get good momentum and they've got a few backs that can cause us problems, so we'll certainly have to keep our eye out for them. What are the things that were taken away after the Fiji game that uh, you really did uh, enjoy seeing? Obviously, the boys gave it everything out there, and it was a, it was a very physical match. Yeah, it was um, a very energy-sapping game. Uh, mentioned the heat already. That really took its toll on us. Um, despite us coming back into the game second half, which we were really proud of the performance, um, our set piece at line-up time was, was really good. Um, scrum we're still working on, and we're hoping to fix that tomorrow. Um, I think... Just in general, we actually started to show a bit of structure, which is, uh, we've, I know the coach has been slightly frustrated, we've not really got to it, but we certainly um, looked at a lot better team. And again, hopefully against New Zealand, we'll be able to demonstrate a further improvement. Well, I'm joined now by Trent Luca, who is the captain of the Defence Blacks for this final game for them as well. Trent, good to see you today. And uh, first of all, I think everybody would just like to say a huge thank you for that wonderful gesture last weekend when your boys did the haka in front of uh, the number 12 shirt which of course was Stefan's shirt. Yeah no it definitely meant a lot to us um, hearing in the news earlier in the week um, we know that um, teams especially in team environments it's quite um, devastating to have a loss so especially uh, when you're overseas as well so I uh, always wanted to show our respect and, um, and pass on our um, best wishes to the team uh, at, at, in the tragic time. Yeah. A great example of uh, the rugby family coming together. Yeah, no, it definitely is. I think um, especially uh, rugby is one thing, but we are military at the end of the day, and so we, are, we serve overseas as well as in these type of environments, and death's always hard, so I think we definitely wanted to mark our, mark, our show of, marks of respect. Sorry. I think a lot of people who were watching last week will probably think you were a little bit unlucky. You scored two tries, and yet you conceded seven penalties to, to lose the game to the French team. Yeah, I mean, we, we are no one else to blame but, our, but ourselves. Um, the French were very good in, in capitalising on our mistakes, and it definitely hurt us in the end. Yeah, so, uh, full credit to them. On the day. So, it's always a great uh, match when you, you play the, the British military at any level, of course. Uh, and so, I'm sure everyone uh, in your team is, is well up for today's game. Yeah, definitely well up for today's game. Um, we have another chance to um, see history for our team, so we never finished on the podium at an IDRC before, so we've definitely um, had time to reflect on the loss last week, but we've had time to uh, regroup as a team and then uh, really focus on today's game. Time now to join our commentary team once again, led by Simon Hunter. Thanks, John, and a warm welcome to everyone, wherever you may be in the world, joining us for this live coverage of the petite final for the championship, the third place playoff at the International Defence Rugby Competition in France. Well, it's the last of five matches for both of these sides. Today's winner will finish third in the tournament overall. UCAF lost 41-29 to a very strong Fiji side last weekend, whilst New Zealand fell short against hosts France. It's another very warm day in Brittany. This time we join you from the Stade de la Rabine in Vannes. Well, you can sense the rugby fever in the air as the IDRC comes to a close today, but the Rugby World Cup is now underway also in France. And it's a very warm welcome to my two co-commentators today. That's Will Reeve and Jay Tugood. Good afternoon, gentlemen. How are you? Hi, hi. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me back. Uh, yeah, really well. Thank you. I'm really well as well. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, pleasure to have you. And uh, obviously, we knew uh, disappointment last weekend, of course, against uh, Fiji in the semi-finals. But how important is it today to come out and finish the tournament? It's been a very intense three weeks uh, on a good note. 
Yeah, it's really important for the boys, uh, not only to finish on a high and go home with, you know, maybe a, a bronze medal or at least a happy memory or two from that last game, but also looking four years in into the future, this third place playoff will decide the draw for the 2027 IDRC. So, you know, that's quite a long focus, but it's, it, it's going to play on people's minds. And Jay, obviously the All Blacks, the New Zealand rugby side, is a very storied team. But what, what do we know about the Defence Blacks, having seen what they did against uh, France last weekend? Um, they did look like a very organised team. Um, but from our analysis that we've done this week, I think they're uh, definitely a team that we can exploit with the strengths that we've got. Um, as long as we execute perfectly, I think we, we should be the team that come out on top today. And what were some of the learnings from the, the disappointment of that losing to Fiji? You know, we saw they're a very good side in broken play. They were very physical as well. What have, what have been some of the things that the boys have been working on this week in training? Three really key messages came in from the coaching staff for us this week. First one was to get into slightly better shape when we're playing off nine, um, you know, with our three forwards coming off the edge. What we found against Fiji was that our shape was a little bit um, sort of fractured and narrow. So we weren't stretching that defense, which meant that only one runner was, was a threat, which put the, the initiative in the defense. And, you know, and Fiji could do a two-man tackle, get a dominant shot on it and sort of stump our, our quick ball. So we've worked really hard in getting a bit wider, trying to isolate defenders and, and hopefully turn those small margins in our favor. Uh, you know, and on top of that, we, we've worked on our communication and, and trying to just get to that edge. And we've got a nice wide pitch in front of us today. Uh, and hopefully we, you know, as Jay said, that we can we can exploit the, the Kiwi edge and, and try and get some go forward in those wide channels. Well, of course, you mentioned the sunshine. We've got a wide pitch uh, here today in Van. Tired bodies at the end of uh, a few weeks in the heat. So how have uh, the workloads been managed? Um, I think we, ha we have done really good, obviously. We have our recovery facilities that we have at Sport Britannia have been really good. Obviously, a lot of the boys are in there after every training session. I can't say about myself, I'm not too fan of cold water, so I'm more, I'm more in the sauna than the ice baths for me. <laughs> Is anyone a fan of cold water? <laughs> um, well, Will sat next to me, he seems to love it. He's always in there. Can't get out of it. Yeah. You get out more, don't you? But, no, it's not, it's not for me, no. I think what's really interesting, Si, is the approach from the, the three services, uh, especially on that 24-hour that period before the game. So for us, you know, clearly yesterday, uh, a Saturday morning, uh, we were out on the field. Uh, warm day, heavy legs, and you know we're running around doing our team run. And, and it's interesting to see how some teams will approach that, maybe doing flip-flops on the beach and just sort of walk, you know, from try line to try line, as it were, and just and have it more of a sort of talk through for confirmation of what to do, uh, you know, versus different different approaches where we're running it and, and we're actually seeing how to do it. And it, it sort of blends that team run with a training session, uh, you know, so a couple of different strategies and aspects, um, but but something really that, that we, we put our, our faith in the head coach um, to sort of get us up to that point and then he hands us the jerseys and, and we go and try and do a job on the uh, uh, at kickoff. And an expanded tournament from previous years when indeed the single services played as Navy, Army and RAF as well. Uh, what have you made of this year's tournament? Because we see 12 teams, the, the spirit seems to have been very good on the pitch and we have Tongans and the Dutch actually in the crowd today coming to watch this match. Uh, what have you made of it, Jay, um, as being part of it really? Um, I, I've loved every minute, obviously, um, seeing all the other services from um, all the other countries getting together. Obviously, um, you, you saw after the Spain game, Spain, even though um, it was such a big scoreline, they still had high spirits and they were having to sing song with us afterwards. And hopefully it's been the same with in all the other groups and in all the other games. There's been high spirits and people getting to know each other and learning different cultures. And Will, you touched on the draw for 2027. As we look ahead to four years down the line, it was something mentioned by the skipper yesterday at training, the importance of playing together as a team as always, but of course, especially for those guys who are putting on the UCAF shirt for the final time. Yeah, I mean, four years is a long way away for some people um, and, and not, that, not that far away for others. You know, we've got a team of uh, sort of young 20s through to mid mid 30s and there'll be some people that will uh, that will welcome a break now after this game and there'll be some people that will be raring to go uh, and they'll be in a purple jersey for the next next four years in between now and, and 2027 where of course we go to Australia uh, which will be a, a huge incentive for a few I'm sure um, but yeah you're absolutely right um, 
you know, we, we've got one eye on, on the future. And, and, and as the captain said at training yesterday, it's about leaving that jersey in a better place now. You know, some people wear it again, some people won't. But for the next 18 minutes, you've got to wear it. And, uh, and you've got to do everything you can, not leave anything on the field. And a warm reception from people who've come to each of the stadiums. People said, some were saying before the tournament, well, Brittany, it's not necessarily known as a rugby stronghold, it's more of a football region. But the way that the crowds have come out in support and made themselves heard has been pretty exciting to see. No, yeah, definitely. I think um, I've really enjoyed meeting all the French people out here and um, all, all the crowd that come and meet us. Obviously, I think the biggest thing for me is um, all the kids that are coming to watch the games. Um, I think that you can tell they're really enjoying it, meeting all the players. And um, hopefully that inspires them to maybe join the military or obviously just push on with their young rugby careers. Well fans young and old here in attendance again today uh, and for all of you joining us online please do let us know where you're watching from wherever you may be around the world one welcome to those of you watching in New Zealand uh, at a very early hour of the morning or late hour of the evening however you wish to see it the players have come out onto the pitch and we'll have a quick look at uh, the UCAF side the pack essentially unchanged from that very physical encounter last weekend against Fiji but changes in the backs include Joe Parkin at scrum half and he's vice captain today he'll partner Jack Johnson in the halfbacks Cam McDonald switches wings right to left Imi Karavali moves from midfield to 14 and Mark Williams comes into the centre wearing the number 23 shirt with the number 12 rested following the tragic passing of Stefan Rees for New Zealand's loose head prop Trent Luca captains the team from the front row. Fly half Cam Gerlach, vice captain. He's got Troy Sheriff for company in the half backs, and Zane Douglas and Tyler Beery in midfield. Well, the players, another special element of this competition, the IDRC, has been uh, the chance really to meet some dignitaries to so the UK side, for both teams' side, also some locals as well. We've got Major General Dave Eastman, chairman of UCAF Rugby, here to shake some hands. This is the point at which you might imagine it really sinks in. Uh, Kickoffs uh, only a few moments away, uh, standing out in the heat. Uh, the players, of course, UCAF in their classic purple and uh, the defence blacks new zealand in white and black as well and also got a uh, musical presence today a bit of a, a brass band lining out on the halfway line just to add that extra bit of color and uh, noise to today's game so uh, yeah you mentioned the changes that the ucaf team have made from uh, the uh, encounter with Fiji, I think we've got a couple of people to have a really close look at today. Bolladao is probably one of those that you mentioned about maybe playing in a, in his last UCAF game. You know, he's been an absolute talisman for the army. Um, obviously, combined services before the UCAF uh, label existed. And, um, you know, he's put his body on the line for the last sort of 15 years or so. Uh, and I'm sure he'll do exactly that for, for 80 minutes again today. Um, and, and I, I suspect our, our game players, uh, you know, Joe Parkin and, and Jack Johnson will want to get him in the game nice and early uh, and try and trouble some of this New Zealand defence. And then out wide, you know, you mentioned Cammy McDonald going from one wing to the other and, and Imi coming up, out slightly further. Two people we want to get into some open space, you know, Cammy McDonald's got really good footwork and, and he'll back himself to go against anyone one on one and, and Imi Korowali another big strong runner you know never knew, never uses two hands on the ball because because one's big enough and he'll, and he'll swat you away with the other one and uh, we'd like to see those get in the game nice and early as well yes bullet Max bullet out not a man you'd have high in your list of players you'd want to try and tackle certainly say that from my perspective I see it well even in training this week we were playing touch and uh, someone's kicked a box kick and I've gone up to catch it and all I've heard is uh, from our own captain, Dave wha uh, Boller, whack him! And I thought, mm, I don't really thundering footsteps. Not, not really sure about if I want to come down on this one or not. Um, but you know, Boller and I have known each other for a while, so I think he might have gone off, gone lightly on me there, and uh, he's just he's stuck to the rules of touch rugby. Life's better as a back, surely. Some would say. Yeah, quite. You now, you, you know, you also mentioned Joe Parkins come in, and and Mikey's gone onto the bench too two different scrum halves Joe Parkin um, you know been named as vice captain uh, head coach likes how he talks likes how he does things around the scrum and uh, of course Mikey's a bit more of an electric runner he's going to light things up hopefully against a tired defense so be interesting to see how that tactical change most likely uh, later on in the game plays out well 
will have the national anthems shortly, also a minute's silence just ahead of kickoff today in Van. Sunny day in Van, UCAF have won the toss. They'll be kicking off as we see it, left to right. And hopefully, good conditions for some nice open play today. That, that's what I'm hoping for. See, um, as you might have seen in the actual World Cup yesterday with England, they tend to kick the ball a lot, which obviously I believe is a fairly boring style of rugby. So, um, that's, I don't, as a UCAF side, that's not what we're really about. Like we, we openly say about running it. If, if we can run it from anywhere, it, it's more exciting to watch. And it's more, for me, it's more exciting to play. So um, hope, hopefully we get to see that today. Now, speaking of exciting things to watch, just about to see the hacker from New Zealand.
yeah, quite jealous actually. <laughs> Uh, you know, it'd be nice to be out there and face that. That's quite unique, and that'll be a real boost for the boys. You can see them drifting over to the corner now. Um, you're going to go and smash some shields. Uh, hopefully, let out, let out a bit of that anger, so we're nice and composed when the ball gets in the air uh, off this kickoff. Yeah, dip, dip on that jealousy there. Obviously, I um I got to experience it against them last year in the Commonwealth for the Royal Navy, and um it, it, it is such an amazing to be out there and be be up against it. Um, but hopefully we can nullify it quite quickly and um, the moment, let the momentum swing our way early on in the game. And another tradition we've seen here at the IDRC in France this year is uh, local people coming on to kick the ball off just before the actual kickoff in the game. It's been lovely for fans, young and old, mascots, people in the crowd, watching on at home to take part in this. Some really interesting matchups, I think, today. Sai, si, if I'm not mistaken, both Lucid props are captains, uh, which will be which will be a challenge. You know, they'll both be at the forefront of the referee's decision making at scrum time. We've got two very different sevens playing against one another. Uh, a very small, sort of uh, low ankle chopping tackling seven versus a uh, Matt Dawson, who's a big ball carrier. You know, good for a turnover as well and a tackle, but but a devastating ball carrier. You look out to the left wing, you know, New Zealand got some, some great footwork on that. Um, the guy with the head guard, you know, we've called him Cheslin Kobe. Um, you know, and of course, you know, on the opposite wing, we've got Cammy McDonald's doing similar stuff. So some really interesting matchups that should make uh, a good 80 minutes here today. Well, fly half, Jack Johnson gets this underway. New Zealand spill it, but it goes backwards. Raph making sure that UCAF back behind the gay line. We saw this from, from New Zealand uh, for 80 minutes. They, they worked their way into the midfield. They, they didn't necessarily box kick as much against the French. Uh, they like to kick through 10, but uh, we'll see how they exit today. We take there from Cam McDonald. Manning to James Roberts. And, uh, Parkin just tidies up a little. Along with Johnson. A little bit scrappy to start, but you can see, you know, if we're going backwards, we revert to going back towards where the players are. We don't compound our errors. We just get back to that edge and then hopefully start again. Lovely little offload from Cotto oh, good there. Good offloading here from there's Parkin. Ready on a rover. You can see already, Johnson. Immy's Imi, got his hand in the air. There's plenty of space out there. Can he take it, Coravalli? Uh, not quite. Uh, but that went forward. As Dawson tries just waiting to for through. the referee's whistle, I think. Immy, Immy and uh, Jack Johnson linking up like they did against the Fijis with um, the ball going off the toe. Uh, probably could have gone with another five metres outside that last defender, but uh, great to see some uh, some varying attack there straight away. Yeah, I, I think that was a good decision. Obviously, probably you could say a little bit of poor execution. Yeah, probably the kick should have gone maybe five more meters towards the touchline and probably a bit longer so um Emmy could have ran onto that um but like will said then very in the picture it's gonna um keep the defense guessing and um keeping them honest well you mentioned two loose head props making sure they're on the right side of the referee as skippers today for both teams uh, also jay too good important as a scrum half to make sure that uh, the breakdown you're on the right side of the ref oh yeah definitely um i think as soon as you start losing a ref around the breakdown i think um you see a sort of roll on effect and the penalties will stop going your way and I feel like um, that was probably our downfall as a team against Fiji in the last 10-15 um, minutes in the semi-final um, the, with, once you lose a referee um, it, you'll probably see yourself on the wrong side of the scoreboard Well Chambers clears there, would have liked a little more ground but it'll be a New Zealand Yeah that's um, my night that's a good exit from New Zealand. I think they got a bit lucky with uh, a bit of miscommunication between Ben and Imi there, letting the ball bounce in the middle of the field. You know, as a back three player, that's, you know, basically rule number one, don't let it bounce. Um, you know, we've just got to defend a line out here and go again. New Zealand take it up the middle. A blundering run there. Make more yards in the center of the pitch. to go up the other way here now it's a nice a nice defensive picture there you know not many purple um, players off their feet nice line of sort of 11 flat defenders and in the backfield 
and eventually we see Dave Manning get his hands on the ball and come away with it. Good penalty there for UCAF. Jack Johnson lumbers up, take the ball, and look to get. Interesting, um, you know, I spoke to Jack Johnson earlier in the week. He said, if you get a penalty in the middle of the field, which way do you kick it? Uh, and he said left, and he's, and he's decided to go right today. So, um, you know, maybe we want to play off that right-hand side. Clearly, uh, most players dominant with the pass, right to left. Perhaps we can look to get a bit more width on this one and get Cammy McDonald in some space. James Roberts, hooker. Going to throw in here, early look at the line out for UCAF. And up goes Forbes. It's a clean take, parking to Johnson. That's lovely. Up goes Bolladow. Bolladow. Yeah, that, that should be a real good confidence booster for James there. Obviously, fir first line out of the game. Um, and hopefully, Brilliant. he's hit it perfectly, bat ball. And as you can see, we've made some yards here, and hopefully, we can get into our structure. And again, you can see them. Imi Korowali on this near side. Hands in the air, acres Shouting of space. Yeah, we've just got to get the ball to him. And Manning looks to put a little chip in. And Williams collects. Nice bit of uh, handwork there. Coravalli outside him. Uh, just over the head of Parkin. Emi Coravalli looks to get the ball going forward again. Johnson back to bullet out. Got to clear that ruck, JJ. Huge bristling run there. Oh, we managed to pull it back. Number eight. Chambers. Radiana Rova. Oh, that's a lovely little look. Yeah, he looks up. And just a half break there. Williams again. And he finds a little bit of space. Oh, that's thunderous hit on Dave Manning. Corvalli again calling for it out wide. Mariana Rova. And Roberts, now can he put in some ah. space? Oh, it's just lost there. New Zealand take it up. And that ball's Lovely. just... Just gone in. A little bit of miscommunication there. I think nice to see we're trying to stretch them. But uh, Imi wanted to come back underneath there on the switch. And, and James just hadn't quite got that message. But a little bit frantic. First five minutes always will be. But we just need to settle down. Go edge to edge. Punch someone up the middle. You know, we can see straight away that that New Zealand defence are getting sucked in very tight around the breakdown. And there's plenty of space. We just need not to panic. You saw Dave Manning's half half crossfield kick uh, you know right intention probably could have just moved it through the hands um, but uh, great to see the boys playing with some uh, some energy and some some variety oh, New Zealand put into the scrum here Calf will be on the defense you get it all right New Zealand Start running into a brick wall in midfield through the hands that's what we saw against France last week they, they throw it up the middle and then they give it to 10 and he, and he leathers it uh, Ben Chambers doing a better job today or better job this time of getting that away Imi Karawali into space a bit of a tussle there on the 22 metre line and looks like New Zealand turn that over no just uh, goes forward well we saw against Fiji quite a few penalties especially in the second half how important uh, has it been to have a few days of course in training this week to talk about discipline around the breakdown and making sure that the longer the games go on and the more heat that's out there the more you're still able to uh, to focus uh, yeah definitely i think um obviously penalty is a massive territory game and um i think as soon as you start giving away you start losing territory and as, as you saw Fiji exploited that and I do believe New Zealand will be good enough to do that against us if we if we do go that way um, I feel like just just then we we definitely had an easy out there and obviously New Zealand win a turnover but they're knocking it on um, I think we, that is a very lucky easy out for us there and Parking with the ball you can put into the scrum on 22 Perhaps just a moment to, for all the players to compose themselves. Bullet out. Straighten up. Parking. Out to Chambers. Taking above his head. He does well there. The full back. Quick ball. Now to Dawson. And he goes the other way, Parking. Once again, Chambers trying to put Kieran Forbes in a bit of space. Patrick score in that match against Tonga. Ben Watson out to Johnson. Williams in midfield. 
and tries to use those dancing feet to make some incisions. Nice to see that we're um, offering a bit of variety off that pod there. Big Bubba Watson, you know, big heavy guy known for carrying, but all he does is pivot and, and hit Jack Johnson out the back so he can play one channel wider. That's a, um, That was a huge part of our focus this week in training, not overworking our front five, you know, not being too predictable off, off the ruck and, and trying to play a couple of channels wider and, and, and even wider still. If I was to be hypercritical, we're perhaps a bit too flat on that second wave. And I think that's why Mark Williams got wrapped up uh, and couldn't execute, um, you know, uh, another another pass to hand. But uh, we've got away with that. And, and Jack Johnson's puts another 20 yards down the touchline. There's another line out, James Roberts. Again, Forbes the target. He takes it. Williams. Oh, there's a great it's pass. a great ball from JJ. Beating that uh, rabbit defender, trying to get up outside of him. Just puts it over the top. That's something of a rocket along the ground there, unfortunately. From Parkin. Just as you can't find a bit of space, but they get the penalty. That just goes back to what Jay was was talking about earlier. As soon as you got, as soon as you lose that referee, uh, you know you'll get punished. And what New Zealand had there was, you know, an opportunity to go to set piece. Now they'll be defending a line out, probably, uh, or, or potentially a shot at three points. Johnson tries to get as close to the corner as he can with that kick. I, th I think that's a good option early on in the game. Obviously, I know people say you want to get points on the board and start building pressure, but obviously um, we haven't really seen a, a mall yet. And I think it'd be interesting to see if our forwards go for a mall here, test, see what their mall defence is like. If, if, if it's something that's weak, that's something that we can look to exploit throughout the game. There is an attempt at a mall, a driving mall from UCAF. Oh, that's very good. They move forward. Ever closer to the line. And that's advantage to UCAF. As Parkin summons his, his man there. I wouldn't be surprised if you, you see blind. Mark Williams and Solo coming at the line here. That's, uh, oh, New Zealand. No, ref calls him back. That was a bit sloppy, that uh, delivery there. Pass out. I think um, Cam could be speaking a bit more there. I, I, I did think if um, Joe is fairly quick off the base, so I think they probably could have gone blind and created a two-on-one there. Obviously, that's just mis miscommunication. But as you see now, we've got a, another shot at a mall, and that previous mall went about 10 metres. We're, we're only five metres out, so hopefully this one could get over the line. Excellent attacking opportunity for UCAF. Right down in the corner this time. Roberts again with the ball. No surprises. Immy's come out nice and wide, trying to just cause a bit of doubt in that last defender's mind. Oh, it's a great driving ball there from UCAF. Can they get over? Wonderful. Who's going to come up Fantastic with the ball? Fantastic score there from UCAF. James Roberts. Well, that's brilliant, as you were saying, with the driving ball. An opportunity there to test out the New Zealand defence, and uh, they came up good. Yep, that's um, that's definitely what we're looking for, and it's um, that that'll be something that plays on New Zealand's head now. Every time we get down into that 22, they'll, they'll probably think that we're going for a mall, which sometimes opens up doors in other areas of the pitch um so can you can be used for trick plays or we keep banging on that door keep making them tired obviously as forwards always say it is it is tiring coming out of a mall so um we just got to keep exploiting weak areas and keep manipulating them as you have five new zealand nil with the conversion attempt to come mark williams squaring up to take it he's playing in midfield today yeah it'd be really reassuring you look back at the campaign so far, um, you know, the two tough games we've had, uh, one of which we won, you know, we scraped a, uh, a narrow win against Georgia down at halftime. You look again at the Fiji game down at halftime, you know, so we haven't started as well as perhaps we'd like to this this tournament. So it's really nice to come out and go 5-0 go up in 12 minutes. Make that seven. Yeah, Great well done, Mark good. Williams.
as we said, wherever you're watching around the world, please do get in touch with us on YouTube, Forza News YouTube and Facebook as well. And Bradley Watley says, come on, Will Reeve. Thanks, Bradley. That's another one of our Marlborough boys. A big shout out to Marlborough who came away with a bonus point win yesterday against Brighton. And another Bradley, Bradley C, says, Heidi from San Antonio, Texas. So great to know you're all listening right across the globe. Dawson. Ref calls them back. And UCAF penalty. Another opportunity here for UCAF to exert a bit more pressure on that New Zealand defence. That's, all, that's always a good thing to um, good thing to see off kickoff. Not even necessarily a penalty, but when you get a clean exit straight after you've scored, it's, it's always a bonus. Uh, it, it is a I know it's a big pet hate of a lot of coaches and a big pet hate of mine. Of once you scored, if you don't get a clean exit off kickoff, it sort of completely kills momentum, and um, that that's a real big bonus, sort of a, an easy let out from New Zealand for UCAF there. Another line out for UCAF. Kodobolavi takes it this time. And Parkin looks for that bit of space in the gap. Forbes. Johnson out to Williams. It's a lovely pass Great out ball. to Ben Chambers. He kicks it on. New Zealand watch that carefully. And the ref calls them back. Well, it's great to have uh, support for both teams on our live coverage. Karen Coates Palgrave says, Go New Zealand! And we touched upon the fact that it's a very early hour in the morning in New Zealand. So hopefully, Karen, you've got some coffee or something nice to accompany your watching of this match. My phone's lighting up now from the Marlborough boys. Um, they've heard the shout out, they all want their own one. Jason wants one for being the best beer drinker in the world. So there you are, Jason. Uh, big shout out to you and we'll see you next week. Well, Nathaniel Titcher Jones has, in each of the games, been popping up as himself in the comments. One of the, uh, the props, of course, in this UCAF squad. <laughs> and uh, we, do, we do keep wondering, is he nipping off to the, uh, the changing rooms to, uh, to comment as himself? Um, no evidence uh, as to the contrary yet, so we'll have to wait and see. But uh, great to get so many comments there. Forbes takes that. It's another big heave from UCAF. It's a good carry from yeah. Mark Williams there, gets us over the game line, yeah, that's he, forwards come running. around the corner. Yeah, it, I, I feel like Mark there has sort of made something out of nothing. That, um, I don't really feel like we ran any sort of move there, but he's, Johnson, he's made space. yards. Oh, and they look to bundle Rugby, through, have they I done so? That's... Yes, they have. It's another try for Yuka. Fantastic work there in support, Joe Parkin. Well played, Dave Manning's got his arms free, got through the defence there and just lifted it to Joe, who reacted really well. Come away with another five-pointer. And as two backs, we mentioned the importance of rolling malls as an option in attack, but also gives you ball moving forward. Going forward, it's nice to have ball uh, not going backwards, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, uh, um, as a nine, it's really nice to attack off a moving ball going forward. Obviously, that one there you, you saw was fairly stationary, so sometimes you just need a centre like Mark did to hit it up just to get the forwards out of that ball and sort of get around the corner and get into a bit of open play but um, yeah definitely as, as a back line it's always a good time to get excited when you've got a ball going forward you can have 12 New Zealand nil and can Mark Williams make it 14 the extra two points for the conversion and the answer is he sure can so you can have 14 New Zealand nil haven't played 20 minutes yet and it's a good start for the UCAF boys. It's New Zealand approach halfway for the restart. Good 
take from Coravalli there. Box from Joe Parkin. take from Tamatoa Rapati, the New Zealand Yeah, that's a good 11. exit. You know, albeit we had our winger on the floor and normally wanting to go and chase those kicks, but Kieran Forbes has done a job there and, and the, the guy's following up and we've ended up, you know, affecting a tackle in their half with uh, basically 12 defenders on their feet. But this isn't what you want to see. Joe Parkins down holding his knee. Yeah, the medics okay on the field. Cam Gerlich puts it high in the air. Coravalli's under it. Looks to run. Obviously, with, with, with a with a nine being down there, obviously, um, I know it is hard when you're on the pitch and you're playing. But we could have communicated there with um, Imi potentially calling a mark there. They they put a high bomb up. They put it into our 22. We could um, we could have called a mark there and slowed the game down and settled. Yeah, we've got Good some. Run. We've got some trigger comms that we uh, that we use in the team, and and one of them is to just bang it into Rose Ed because we need to get the ball off the field. So. Weirdly, we haven't done that, and we just kicked it straight on top of Joe Parkin. <laughs> yes, we hope he's okay. Still clutching his knee there, it appears. Joe Parkin, number nine for UCAF. Ref calls time there. The medical staff have a look. Hope hopefully this isn't too bad for Joe there. Um, obviously, but it probably looks like with him staying down this long, with this injury, it's probably looking like Mikey McDonald's going to be on um, at nine. And obviously, we did have we did have him on the bench today as a nine and ten replacement. But obviously, Taft not not being on the bench as well. If obviously if anything happened to JJ, Mikey would have been slotting in there. So um, it is good having people on the on the pitch that are versatile and can play different positions. Important, of course, in these conditions for the players to stay hydrated. Just seeing a lot of water being taken on board there for both sides. And a special time, of course, for the tournament to be held. As always, just before and at the very beginning of the Rugby World Cup in the host country, France. And we're seeing quite a bit of fervour for that around the place. A lot of people, uh, of course, watching the um, first number of games the last couple of days. We've got uh, uh, more today. And, and the boys feed off that energy, I guess, as well. They do, yeah. And the big one tonight is Fiji versus Wales. We've got a sprinkling of Welsh and a handful of Fijians. So during that opening, that closing ceremony of the IDRC tonight, we might have some uh, competing priorities. Well, it's good to see Joe Parkin up and about, getting some applause from the crowd here. It's a little, uh, walking a little gingerly, but uh, he's had a bit of time with the doctor. And I, I don't think he can carry he's on. Not, uh, no, it appears he's not quite as, I think quite as good as he was there. And, uh, Sadly for him, I think that's the end of his day. Joe Parkin. And a warm reception from all those wishing him all the best. And hopefully he makes a recovery. So Mikey McDonald it is to come on in his place. Nice combination here at halfbacks now. Um, you know, Mikey and JJ play together routinely, not only for the Army, but also for the Royal Engineers, uh, both Rugby Union, and, uh, and I think both of them are heading out to the States for some Rugby League after this tournament. So they should be fairly well connected, and uh, and hopefully that brings a bit of gel to the to the attack. But knowing where each other is without even looking at times. Yeah, I, I feel like they have got a great combination. I feel like, obviously, like we say, um, Mikey does like to play really quick and he is very sporadic and it is exciting to watch. And I feel like JJ, on the other hand, is a very cool, cool and calm collective pl player. So I think it, it sort of goes hand in hand and it very balances out really well. 
It's yet another fascinating element, of course, to representing UCAF, playing styles of the three services, and of course, all the players within each of those services. And Sheriff, New Zealand number nine. It's a Matt Dawson special, just picking up those inside tackles. Jack yeah, Johnson more than cool. happy to leave them to him, I think. He, you know, Matt Dawson wants to get stuck in and wants to start tackling. And if, if we don't have to have JJ on the floor, then, then great. It's nice when you've got support from your big back rowers. Yeah, definitely. Um, as a nine, it's always nice as well at the, at the back of scrums. Occasionally when you get back rowers saying, oh, don't, wor don't worry about eight, I'll take him. You push out to first receiver, it's sort of... Um, it definitely relaxes you sometimes when they've got big back rowers on the other team. Another you can't put into the scrum here. Mikey McDonald with the ball. This is a really exciting uh, position for this scrum. You see there's enough backfield uh, that the New Zealand wingers and fullback have to worry about. Uh, you know, but there's enough sort of of our, of our own half to not worry too much about about kicking too long, so we can play some uh, some rugby here. That's just spilled forward, but Chambers. We got away with that one, I think. Uh, you know, that was. I'm interested to see what this penalty is for here. I didn't, I didn't really see. I think late tackle on Ben Chambers. Right, who's okay. it's fairly late here. Spilt it. Ball's already gone, and then um, whoever it was has uh, decided to put him through the floor. Johnson ready to take the kick both captains behind him waiting to hear what the ref has to say looks like the referee's going to his pocket it's going to be a card here it seems It is indeed. It's a yellow card. It's going to be 10 minutes in the sin bin. And you can have, be, have the man advantage here for 10 minutes. Johnson looks to put it in the corner. You can see that New Zealand have lost a line-out option there. I think it's one of their back rowers who've gone off. Uh, and with the mall, the success at the mall we've had already, I think that might be something we want to try and penalise here and capitalise on uh, on that advantage in the next 10 minutes. Roberts to throw into the line-out. Forbes, the recipient, once more. Yeah, you can see straight away we've gone to a 6 plus 1. But unfortunately, referees pulled us back. Newcastle had to move back another 10. Well, Karen Coates, Paul Grave, who's got back to us and says, Yes, my nephew playing for Defence Blacks. I am so biased. Go, Tyler Beery, number 13. <laughs> At least you're honest. <laughs> it's brilliant. And Nick Dermott watching in Belgium. Go well, UCAF. Uh, thanks to both of you for getting in touch. Nick Dermott will be a familiar name for a few of the Army boys. Hello, Nick. And Karen Haler, behind you all the way, lads, from the Haylers in Portsmouth, Hampshire. New Zealand. Number 11, Tanatora Pate. Dancing feet there, Caleb Harima. Back, and Tristan Reed. Lock. Oh, it's a missed pass that uh, goes awry. Just into touch. Definitely, definitely lucky there. I think. Um, 
when, when they had numbers up on the on the outside there, and we probably could have um, let them eat up a bit of space, but used the touchline as an extra defender there, rather than sort of jamming up and letting them throw a ball over the top there. Kick or it's not. Go New Zealand. McDonald, Johnson. It's Matt Dawson. Oh, he finds space there, Matt Dawson. Matt Dawson. Dawson. Can he get through, Matt Dawson? Looking for men on his shoulder. That's great work on the floor from Dawson. And Paul just goes back there from Mikey McDonald. Mark Williams. Just got to go through the hands. And tries to miss great a few passes ball. there. Just got to give it. Oh, that is a... New Zealand have taken it, but it's a UCAF penalty. That's it. Uh, looks fairly high, that Cameron challenge. McDonald will not be happy that Kieran Forbes hasn't given him the ball there. He could have walked in. Yeah, as, as, Man a, over. as, a, as a back there um, from Cam, I'd be absolutely fuming there. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. But look at that for a set. I mean, we've hit a perfect back ball. The line out. Matt Dawson's gone at the line with real intensity. He's got an option inside. He's got an option outside. You know, that's what puts doubt in the defence and allows him to get through. We haven't panicked. Uh, you know, Mikey McDonald gets scragged a bit at the back of that ruck. Still haven't panicked. Jack Johnson's just said, give me that ball. It's going wide. And uh, and he's put Kieran Forbes away. Um, you know, and if Kieran had just been able to stick that last pass, we'd be, uh, we'd be having another conversion attempt, I think. Dave Manning just having a word with the referee there. Mike McDonald takes it quickly. Let's pull it out. And has he got there? Not quite. Not quite there. In the back screaming for it out there, Ben Chambers. Yeah, plenty of space. Imi Corowali's got his hands in the air. Ben Chambers has got his hands in the air. Hold on, move it out. Forwards get ready for another drive. We've stolen the line. It. But loose, New Zealand have stolen it. Loose ball and away go New Zealand. And on the clearance block there. Kotobolavu takes it. Well done, Koto. Another opportunity for UCAF, albeit a little further away than they were a few seconds ago. It's that's big Ben Watson. Yeah, let's find an edge and get back to structure. Boa again. Watson. Ben Watson doing what he does best and just getting up the middle, giving the halfbacks a platform to attack from. Dave Manning, skipper. And Alex Hayson there. He's just dropped that going forward. I think we need a little bit more composure there. Um, you know, Dave and Alex have come round. They haven't really attacked the line. Uh, you know, Dave's Dave's given that to Alex Wells. He's been totally covered by the defender, and he hasn't been able to uh, to get his, his arms on the ball there and, and, and hold it up. You know, that's a two-man pod. We should be going in threes. You know, maybe even fours when we get that close to the post. Really tighten up, lower the lower the risk. Re uh, excuse me, lower the risk and come away with a reward. Gaff, of course, wanting to take advantage of this period in the sin bin. Or New Zealand, man advantage. Yeah, definitely with, with, with a man up here, obviously you, you don't have to score straight away. Just stay up there, build the pressure. At least get, if you can get one score when they've got a man off the pitch, it's always a bonus. But building pressure in their 22, it's always going to knacker out a defensive team. As everyone will know, defending your own 22 and on your own try line for long periods, it, do, it does kill a lot of your energy. We wait for another scrum. Troy Sheriff of New Zealand, the ball. Mikey McDonald, his counterpart, watches on. Move it out to midfield there. And oh, that's a good. Great still for Mimi there. The New Zealanders will be disappointed with that. That's a really good carry, really strong. Good from Tyler Beery there. But, uh, Yukaf took the ball. You want your centre to just go to ground there, uh, secure the ball, 
uh, and bang it 60 yards down the field and turn turn the shirts around. But unfortunately for, for New Zealand, they've lost that and, and Imi Korowali's come away with the ball. And now we're dealing with a Mexican wave at the back with the Tongans and the Dutch. Great atmosphere, isn't it? And it's, it's catching on. I think we're going to have to stand up on. in a second and <laughs> join yeah, I think in. So. Yeah, it's just juggling the microphones, getting the arms in the air. But so si, you're right, it's a great atmosphere. You know, it's a nice, it's a nice stadium here with seats at four sides, plenty of crowd. Mexican waves picking up some momentum. The noise is picking up, and uh, and for the next 12 minutes of this first half, we should uh, should be able to enjoy that out in the sun. Big day of rugby in van. Of course, the final later on here, France Fiji to decide the champion of this IDRC 2023. Just pulled a little there. Not be too happy about that, Cam Gerda. Yeah, it's always tough for a fly half. Everyone wants you to kick it as far as you can, but as soon as you miss touch, you're the enemy. Uh, you know, sometimes you just got to bang it into the into the seats and just get it off the field. Yeah, I've I've, I've spoken to a lot of fly halves in my time that they say um, it's always annoying for them when you're a teammate. Go, I'll, I'll just make sure, mate. Just make sure, and it normally puts them off before they kick. Very wonderful offer to Sheriff. He's in there, just looking to ship it out. The Kiwis are here to play, which is great. There's the skipper, Trent Luca. There's that battle we talked about, you know, the both, both loose head props going at each other in the midfield. And that's uh, a bit high there. Ref just playing advantage. A tip over from Caleb Harima. Ref is back for the penalty. You just see Boller apologising there. He'll be, he'll be disappointed with that. Big, strong defender. Uh, you know, shouldn't be giving away penalties. He, he won't be happy with himself. But uh, the team will forgive him, I'm sure. Manning and Luca, the two skippers, getting a bit of a word from the referee. To his big number eight, bowl it out, just make sure. A bit lower next time. Yeah, tackle heights are really uh, a really popular conversation at the moment. Um, you know, clearly at uh, various levels, various rules applying, and, and you know, a lot of people talking about the rate of concussion. Is it going to actually be uh, improved by the new tackle laws or not? You know, I think only time will tell. Zealand night. Oh, but that's gone long and taken by Matt Dawson for UCAF. Well done, Matt Dawson, just sets us up here. Oh, it's Johnson, Williams in midfield. That's a lovely Great pass to Ben Chambers. Inside to Radian Rova. He's also got wonderful feet, but New Zealand have taken it. And not quite get the offload away. And the ref says that has indeed gone forward. A couple of times now we've seen New Zealand come away with that ball at the breakdown. You know, we're going forward there. That should be really clear, um, you know, really clean, quick ball. But I'm not sure what uh, what's happening, whether we're, we're not putting enough people in the ruck or whether it's greasy and it's coming out. I, I don't think it's too greasy, but um, something's happening and, and New Zealand are beating us to it. Well, as a scrum half, Jay, a master of passes, uh, how much uh, more difficult does the heat make it just to grip that ball? It's a bit um, sweaty out there. I actually find it really difficult in the heat. Obviously, everyone is different, but my, my hands get very, very sweaty in the heat. So normally I have to tape up my fingers to uh, allow a bit of extra grip. Um, but yeah, so normally, normally in heat or in uh, lots of rain, I normally tell everyone, everyone to tighten up a little bit just so my the distance of my pass doesn't have to be too much. And for back three players as well, and you're taking high balls, makes it a bit more difficult in these conditions, does it, Will? Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest contributor is the sun, obviously. And, um, you know, if, if a kicker puts it right on the, <laughs> right in the sun, you, you're you going to have a, a, a tough day of it. And, you know, as we're you, seeing here. Oh. Yeah, well, uh, his son's behind his back. I don't know what it his was. excuse is. Um, but, you know, if it gets slippy, it, it's not necessarily the high ball that kills you because you can just put it in the bread basket. It's, it's trying to catch with your, you know, with that ball out in front and move the, 
move the ball across your body nice and quickly. That's Little where it becomes through. very difficult. Can McDonald get there? That's Mikey and his brother on uh, on the same wavelength there, which is nice to see another sapper con uh, uh, another sapper connection. Um, you know, I've had, and I've actually had my f my phones lit up with a, a shout out from the McDonald's back in the UK, both both the family and and also from Cammy's girlfriend Anne Marie. She said hello, so well well done to you two boys. They're, they're enjoying watching you today. Yes, indeed, and hello to all the McDonald's Anne Marie as well. And uh, yeah, it was uh, well tracked back there, Caleb. Harema, New Zealand number 14. Nice little kick put through. Assistant coach B. Bonamassi coming on with a bit of water. Much appreciated, I imagine. Yeah, I think the boys will be uh, looking forward to getting out the sun at half time and having 10 or 12 minutes to just sort of breathe and drink and perhaps get an uh, ice towel on the neck or whatever it is they want to do. Uh, and, you know, Mark Williams especially probably put some sun cream back on that head of his. <laughs> New Zealand number 13, Tyler Beery getting quite a few shout outs. Bridget Carlson as well. Williams. And it's good. That's a lovely strike. Yeah, that's a great strike from Mark there. He's been doing it all week in training. You know, he's a good he's good for his extras, training finishes, and he pulls his kicking tee out and goes and nudges a few and you know it's paying reward for him today and he'll be he'll be notching up a couple more this afternoon, hopefully. And I spoke to Jack Johnson who I've been rooming with for a month. Um he said, you know, if, if we score any tries today, I'll probably let Mark have a go. Jack Johnson had his fair share against Spain. I think he kicked fourteen out of twenty, so uh, he's letting Mark have a go today, which is great. His kicking boots had a busy day. Well, on the subject of handling, G says, Dave Manning has the slickest prop forward hands I've ever seen. It's quite the uh, it's quite the claim, isn't it? Yeah, quite the accolade. Clearly hasn't seen Carl Sinclair. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, we, we do sort of say um, Dave in the open field, it is sort of like having an extra back row player. Like, he, he isn't the typical typical prop forward that you normally have on the pitch he's, de he's definitely a lot silkier and can move the ball very well New Zealand in midfield find the space and they've shipped it out wide it's Beery number 13 and in he goes for New Zealand that's, that's a very a very try. very good try you know we thought we had a decent kick chase James Roberts puts a tackle in on the first man really well timed to make sure he's not in any trouble in the air two quick passes and away you go yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely um, sort of on the, the lads on the negative there. J James has done well to get up there and make, make the first initial tackle. Um, it's, all, it's always good having one initial shooter to try and contest the ball or put the ball catcher under pressure. But obviously everyone else behind that needs to connect up and make a sort of purple wall. And clearly we've not done that at one pass. We've broken through. I think it's, it, it, it all starts with the kick, right? The kick's got to be much closer to this touchline. We've got to get... We've got to get a, a better chase up the touchline and not let them attack the midfield because that's where we're vulnerable. Um, you know, boys won't be happy with that, but at least they'll know what to do about it and hopefully we won't do that again. Um, you know, with five minutes left in the half, we can kick this long and, and try and play the next five minutes out and go into the half, um, you know, with a fairly comfortable lead. Jamie Doig, great as always to hear from you, Jamie, saying great to be able to keep up to date with the World Cup. Thanks for the footage. And he's backing the UCAF boys to take their place. Yeah, another really familiar name for the Army boys there. Jamie Doy did a, a great job as kit man for a number of years, and he's now doing the same thing for Leicester Tigers. So, hello, Jamie. Uh, nice to have you watching. Hope you enjoy the game. Arena. And it's a good one. They've narrowed the gap to 10 points. New Zealand, UK Armed Forces 17 and Defence Blacks 7. Just under 40 minutes played, approaching half time. Crowd fairly excited about this restart. And Johnson obliges. That's a great Cammy carry. McDonald. Yeah, Cammy McDonald's a great defender, but sometimes physics isn't on his side and he's gone backwards on that one. He's going to move it wide. A little chip put in there. 
and Williams' left boot just ensures that you can, can gather. We saw that little chip a lot, didn't we, against France? It, it, it's almost undefendable. It, it, within a blink of an eye, it's on his toe. He doesn't shape up for it. It's just no break of stride. Throws it on his foot. And if he'd have connected there and got a bit more grass, I think we'd have been in a bit more trouble. Yeah, I, I think it's a, re a really exciting skill. I don't think people realise how difficult it is to drop it on the toe, running at quite a lot of speed. Um, so when it does come off, it is a, it is a very exciting thing to happen. Well, that's short from Kobe Debray, but uh, we couldn't quite work that. He and Ben <laughs> Another nice little play from New Zealand. We've uh, obviously studied their line out a lot this week. Perhaps haven't been alive to that one, but um, you know, we've got away with some with some bad handling there. And if that had stuck, I don't know what Mikey McDonald uh, would have been up by himself making a tackle on a big big hooker there. Knocked back by Forbes. Fax bollard out. Thundering run again. Is that handling from Dave Manning again? But it's gone loose. And New Zealand looking through the boot. And Tamatoa Rapati to find his way through, but not quite. Yeah, obviously, um, we we run this move in training quite a lot um, to try and manipulate the defence. And um, I think potentially there the, the comms need to be a bit better. I wouldn't say come back down the short side with on there. We probably should have just kept going around the corner and then worked our way to the far edge. Um, we, we normally look to run that move when a team is overfolding, but it doesn't really look like um, New Zealand are doing that at the moment. It almost looked like we were a number down. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't I, think that was I don't think Imi Karawali had got the message, either that or he ignored it. Another great platform to attack from. You know, this is similar to what I talked about earlier with the scrum being close to the halfway line. There's plenty of backfield that the New Zealand team have got to worry about. Jack Johnson's got a great boot, plenty of grass for him to find, but also no blindside so we can stack six players and, and overload that midfield and uh, hopefully pick the right hole. McDonald gets it out to Johnson. Mariana Rover. There you go, see that what we ben do. Two, two nice passes and put Ben Chambers and Callum McDonald into some space. And he gets Cam McDonald there. With the offload, but he's just into touch. That looked a bit high to me. Um, that's probably something we're going to be fairly annoyed about there, though. We, we spoke a lot in previous games about staying away from the touchline. We we had plenty of opportunity there to sort of stay in field, and um, we sort we we ran out of touch. Which, um, as a team, we've said that's really negative point. So I think hopefully next time we we go wide, we can stay away from that touchline. Yeah, approaching half time. <laughs> As is evidenced by sound effects. But here we are with the New Zealand line out. Pump it up the middle, kick it off 10. That's where my money sits. Heard it here first, folks. But they oh. just put it into touch. I stand corrected. Well, UCAF lead, 17 points to seven at half time. Uh, summation, gentlemen, of what you've seen in the first half. Some really nice rugby. Uh, I spoke earlier about how important it was to score first, and I think that's proven to be true. You know, if we hadn't scored first, and we might be going in at 10-7, uh, which would be a bit less comfortable. But I think if we can work out our errors and why the ball's getting pinched at the breakdown and just keep it on the field, edge to edge, and then at, uh, when the space opens up, put some big runners in up the midfield, I think we'll be more than fine. Yeah, obviously, I don't think we've seen much from New Zealand yet as an attacking side. Obviously, I feel like UCAF probably had most of the possession. Um, I would put all my money on saying this first 10 minutes of the second half, they're going to come out and they're going to come out firing. So um, it's about UCAF weathering that storm, getting those small margins, like Will said, right. And um, I think we're going to be in for a very good second half. Absolutely. Second half coming up shortly. Do stay tuned, of course. And at halftime, we'll have some extended highlights from UCAF's showdown with Fiji last weekend. But first, as the UK uh, Armed Forces and New Zealand are playing, as the Rugby World Cup is in full swing, also in France, we have asked the UCAF squad for their predictions in the tournament. Argentina. 
surprise. And who else? I'd like to say Wales, but I think after their victory last night, France. France World Cup winners. Against who, possibly? Or maybe South Africa, potentially. That'll be a good battle. Uh, that'll be the, the big two contenders for me. Uh, I think it's going to be South Africa and France. France, New Zealand. Uh, I think with France being the home nation, I think uh, that'll give them a boost so I can see them being at the final. And I think it may be New Zealand again. Uh, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with England and South Africa again. Uh, I think it'll be France and South Africa. I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to go with South Africa and France in the final. Uh, I think I'm going to back France at home um, and in the final with them. I'm not sure if it's possible that they can get there in the same route, but um, I think South Africa will probably get there as well. Um, yeah, but I think France can win it. I think we're going to have France and New Zealand back in the final for this World Cup. Uh, ooh, I think South Africa are probably there. Uh, and I think looking at the other side of the draw, we're probably going to pull the French through, I think. I would have said Fiji. However, I'm going to say Wales. I think Warren Gatland always has something up his sleeve. Looking at the victory over England, I think uh, Fiji would be the dark horse for the World Cup. I'd like to say England are going to turn it around. That's what I think, that's what I hope. So we'll go for England. Dark Horse, maybe Scotland, and definitely Ireland. I think I'll, I'll go with Wales. I'll uh, stick to my home nation and I'll go with Wales. Uh, definitely Fiji. I think Scotland could do really well. They've got a tough group, but uh, they've got some really sort of exciting attacking backs, so I think they could surprise a few people. Biggest surprise, I think, would have been Fiji before they had their injury to the 10, caught it. Um, could still well be Fiji, but I think Argentina are going to go quite far in this World Cup as well. Uh, I'm going to go with Scotland for the Dark Horse. Uh, I'd like to say Wales, uh, but I think Fiji. Uh, yeah, a little surprise. I think they've got a lot of a lot of backs that can be forwards and forwards that can be backs, which means they can play some really exciting rugby edge to edge. Uh, you know, we've seen them come away with a win against England at Twickenham recently. So, toss off Fiji. have broken through here, they find some space. Ryan Crowley looking to track them down. And they've made it through there, Fiji. And they get the try. First try of the match. Go by the Fijians, finding that space. Fiji move it through the hands. And that bounced awkwardly. Oh, but they find space there, Fiji. Down the right-hand side. And it's a wonderful score. And we weren't going to stop him from that range, the fullback. Fiji try and power through here. It's looking very dangerous. They ship it out right. Can they make this? And it's another try for Fiji. And the wing. Proving rather challenging for UCAF right now. James Roberts with the throw. And UCAF now with an opportunity to really push and put pressure on that Fijian defence. Uh, it's a wonderful rolling ball there from UCAF. And they've got the advantage as well. Advantage. And the ref just having a look. And a try there for UCAF. They're on the scoreboard with a try here. 20 points to eight. Fantastic move there from Kieran Forbes. An advantage to UCAF. Have they got it there? Yes, they have. UCAF try. Quick ball, Mikey McDonald. Good offloads there. Another high challenge there, Ian. Yeah, that was a bit, from this distance, it's a very upright tackle, and we have a very clear protocol for, for head contact. The referees will work through now.
and it's a red. It's a red card. Still lots of rugby left to play. And you can go quickly. And have they made it? Yes, they have. It's another try for UK Armed Forces. And they take advantage of that pressure. The Gians move it across the field. And finding a bit of space again. We saw this a little bit in the first half. Can they keep it through the hands? They sure can. And are they going to score again, Fiji? Well, we say the game is close again. And Fiji. Had another try. Johnson. Chambers out to McDonald. Steps inside McDonald. This could be an interesting one. Oh, that that knock on. I think the flag from the uh, assistant referee would suggest it's probably deliberate. It's going to be the, the main question here is whether there's cover coming across, and therefore are we looking at penalty try territory uh, and yellow card territory? It's a yellow card and looks like it's a penalty try as well. And it's a yellow card, penalty try, seven points to the good for UCAF. And it's gone high again. Oh, for James have taken it here. Number 20, pairing for the line. And they've scored. It's another try for Fiji. Extend that lead. And it's a good one. And that signals the end of the game. It's Fiji who march on to the final of this IDRC, the International Defence Rugby Competition. A disappointing end for the UCAF side. But boy, in Kai, they've played their part in what's been a fascinating semi final here in Rennes. place playoff in the international defense rugby competition in France. UCAF are leading 17 points to seven here at uh, the break and uh, as we wait for the uh, players to come out uh, it's the last of five matches for both these sides. Today's winner of course will finish third overall. Uh, both teams going down in the semi-finals. UCAF to Fiji 41 points to 29 and New Zealand fell short 21-15 against the host France. Those two sides France and Fiji go head to head later uh, but the defense blacks New Zealand have uh, come back out onto the field and you have to follow shortly and uh, uh, welcome again to uh, my co-commentators Will Reeve and Jay Two Good. Uh, gentlemen what are we hoping to see in this second half and uh, for the UCAF side what will they be wary of having seen the way New Zealand started upping the tempo really uh, in their play towards the end of the half? Um, I think obviously they'll probably look at that, that like backfield return obviously like like will said on a if we do poor kicks or a poor kick chase they're obviously a team that look to run it back um they do look quite dangerous in the loose there so i uh, i think you will be looking at trying to nail down that if they are going to kick the ball we need a good kick chase to stop stop them running back there i think also they'll probably like we said before look at the breakdown area if we look after the ball at the breakdown area i can't really see other ways of them turning us over we have looked good at handling at the moment so um yeah, it'd be really interesting to see how both teams are going to attack the second half. I think there'll be two things at play as well, Simon. The biggest difference now, having swapped then is the sun. You can see that that shadow starting to creep into the top left corner. So if Mikey and JJ aren't putting the ball over there to trouble that back three, I'd be surprised. And then, and secondly, uh, some fit levels of fitness and fatigue, you know, nice hot day, end of the tournament. Uh, we're going to see whose bench has got the most impact and who's got the most juice left in the legs. And you can see straight away, I think, 
A couple of changes. Um, looks like Ryan Crowley's come on. Pelicotta Balavu on for James Roberts. Hooker. Yep. Yeah. Toby Pat's on as well, which I'm really excited about. Um, thanks, Bullet Out. Yeah, he, um, he's got the nickname the Hungarian Hitman for a reason, and I hope you get to see that in this second half. The reason being he tackles everyone, not that he actually kills people. <laughs> Uh, so really, really uh, excited to see Toby playing. He's a really physical uh, sort of half back row, half second row, but it looks like he's come on the six. I expect Kieran Forbes will move to eight, keeping Matt Dawson at seven, doing what he does best. Doing what he does best at open side. Matt Dawson. Not the scrappiest of takes from Alex there, and the referee's given it as a knock on. I think he probably could have done with a back lifter there. Um, one man lift from the front, you know, isn't uh, necessarily the most stable. Um, so we'll go to a scrum straight away for the start of the second half. A bright start for UCAF. We mentioned the tries, of course. Two tries there in the first half. Uh, but tapered off a little bit in terms of scoring towards the end of the half. Uh, important, of course, for them to get on the board uh, quickly here in the second 40. Yeah, you can never take away from... The opposition they've always got a stake in things it might not necessarily be UCAF falling away it might just be them picking up some momentum and some intensity as you can see there you know not the best of balls but he's broken oh, two he's tackles. The shoulder. New Zealand that's an advantage to New Zealand as well Dylan Duplessis, number eight there. Good carry for New Zealand. Very New Zealand sounding name. Tristan Reid. And a midway through New Zealand. That's their second try of the day. I think, I think that's all come from very weak defending. And straight, straight away all from the scrum. You've seen ev every tackle sort of been high there. Um, if we get that, those chop tackles in lower, then New Zealand aren't going to be able to make much yards. But I think ev every tackle in that whole sequence there has been fairly high and fairly weak. Um, so that's definitely uh, an area that UCAF are going to have to Im improve on for the ne next period because um, you'll just see us going backwards all the time. Yeah, that's really, really key, you know, to go out now and start making those tackles, not let people, sh you know, shrug off. We, we should be affecting a tackle on that first phase, 10 metres behind the gain line. Great line speed from, from Mark Williams, but no one really came with him. Um, you know, and he, he sort of gets shrugged off. Then I think Crowley came in, second man gets shrugged off. Um, you know, so what should have been a dominant tackle behind the gain line on that bouncing ball has resulted in half a line break for New Zealand. Then we compounded that with a couple of other um, poor tackles and uh, one of the big lumpy forwards has just rolled over Ryan and got, got in. Caleb Harima, New Zealand number 14, shaping up to take this conversion. To bring them to within three points of UCAF. I think that's going to come round. Oh, maybe not. Pushed that slightly and the flag stayed on. So it remains UCAF 17, New Zealand 12. As in the first few minutes of this second half in Van be interesting to see how how that plays out with a, a five point margin versus what could have been a three point margin makes a game very different New Zealand have got to got to look to get the ball across the line again rather than just putting it through the posts yeah you could you could arguably say that's all come as well from the initial kickoff from the second half um, as soon as you drop a ball off kickoff it puts your team immediately under pressure um, hopefully oh, that's the that's biggest, back biggest slap back I've ever seen bit of volleyball there for Conor Valley. Jack Johnson. Epi Kotobalavu. Replacement hooker. Ryan Crowley gets in the ball to Williams. Donald again to Ben Bubba Watson. Someone's got to go with him. We got. We can't send a one-man runner up. Oh, I don't know what Dave's doing here. Again, a cut of a there, but just uh, 
that's yeah. just a bit of a bit of a mess. I think if you wind back a few phases, that starts with Jack Johnson going up the middle, puts your decision maker out the out the game. You know, in fairness, we got to the edge, but then there's still no shape to bring us back. And uh, you know, Dave peels off one man, brings the nine into the ruck, and then nine tries to get out the ruck, ends up crossing, and unfortunately, that's a just compounding a couple of errors and now we're defending a, a line out in our own half yeah obviously having having a fly half go go in happens in rugby obviously that's just when other people have to step up and like will was saying then no one's really done that there. and yes yes we hit an edge but while jj's getting back to his feet has any has anyone really organized there i don't think they have could be deberry new zealand hooker gets it in it's a little bit scrappy, but uh, Defence Blacks take it in, in the end. Troy Sheriff, scrum half, looking to his forwards. Tristan Reid. Sheriff this time to Tamati, the 15, but uh, pass was a little behind him and the ball has gone forward as a result. The crowd don't like that one, but I'm sure our boys will. That's a bit of a let off. You know, the New Zealand are launching from their set piece there, a couple of good carries, and then unfortunately just scrum half putting the ball behind that J line, and um, he's having to slap it down. Unfortunately, it's gone forward. Well controlled by there. Kieran Forbes. It's a good scrum. We've got it up on one. So I think Dave Manning's perhaps got the rub of his opposite man there. We can have penalty. On halfway. Yeah, you can see the New Zealand tight head just apologises to the to the boys there. I think Dave maybe got the got the shove on him, and uh, we got we got it up on that near side. And Jack Johnson's put us into the 22, hoping to launch now, which is great. It'd be interesting to see if we go with the same game plans the first half. It'd be interesting to see if we maul here or, or do we try and go for a strike play off the top. Happy Kodabalavu. Chance at the line out. Having placed James Roberts. The hooker. And Toby Papp gathers that. Yeah, well, well cleared up by Papps and he's given us a couple of yards there. But again, you can see how Very flat there. our shape off that first pod is pretty poor. There's three guys there, all defended by one player. Dave tries to, to make a tip, and no one's no one's in a position to receive it. You know, and we knock it on in front of the New Zealand post, where we should be able to mount some pressure and uh, and get round the corner, around the corner, around the corner, and, and then maybe strike to outside. But unfortunately, New Zealand have got a chance here to clear the lines. Yeah, you might you might have heard me say earlier is it, when you're in a uh, opponents 22 you don't have to score straight away and it's sort of looking like there we've sort of boards have tried to rush something to try and get over the game line when we as a team should just be happy to be in there we're, we're early on in the second half start building pressure and um hopefully they give away a penalty or, or something happens there it's a good show from UCAF. but uh pings and it'll be a New Zealand penalty. The other side of the coin there, I think. Dave, Dave's gone in at an angle by the sounds of it, from what the referee's saying. Um, you know, and I'm no scrum expert. Uh, you know, and uh, two minutes ago he got the benefit of the doubt, and then this time he doesn't. So we'll just have to deal with that. But that's not the best of exits from uh, from New Zealand. But um, they'll go to their own set piece and. Uh, flip reverse the kind of the backfield question we've been having a while ago this is a good spot for the New Zealand kickers there's plenty of grass for Cami and uh, Ben Chambers to worry about so we'll see how they launch New Zealand bring on some fresh legs here obviously um, 
we might see that a, a burst of energy come into them now with some fresh legs on the pitch. Obviously, with this heat, everyone does get tired. So th th sometimes this is a good time in the game to um, be making changes. Yep. A few uh, changes to New Zealand, Ethan Bartle, Jared Deal and TJ Oliver making their way onto the pitch. Jeremy David on it, Cooker throws into the line out. Great shot, great shot by Toby Papp there, just stops him dead, allows the defence to get on the ball and Cotto comes away with it. Williams gets wheeled round by the defenders. Very a bit static out there, Jack Johnson's not going forward on the ball there and gives Mark a bit of a bit of a hospital ball just to deal with the rush defence. Yeah, New Zealand have taken that one. They're going to look to spread it. The defence is going backwards. Tomati to number 15. That's the skipper Trent Luca. Yeah, props doing what props do. TJ Oliver gets it out there to Barthol. Again, and Gerlach. Good rap tackle from Matt Dawson. And out it goes. It's Jared Deal. Oh, Jack Johnson just manages to grab him there. That's what that wingspan will do. Great penalty there. Who, who, I wouldn't that? be surprised if Matt Dawson comes up from that. Yeah. yeah, he's made his presence felt today. The blue head guard, you know, ever present. Uh, and we spoke earlier about Jack Johnson letting him have the tackles. Well, Jack Johnson's made the tackle there and Matt Dawson's come in on the ball and uh, and the referee's given it to him. So that's that's not a bad defensive set. You know, we were broken a couple of times, but we scrambled pretty well there and Matt Dawson's got us out of trouble. Yeah, you, you can see how, how effective that chop tackle is. As as you heard Will say a minute ago, T Toby has made an excellent chop tackle and then Cotto's made a turnover. There, JJ's made a chop tackle. Dawson's got the turnover. I think that's a real weapon that we should be exploiting. If, we, if we, we've got people that are great over the ball, if we can keep chop tackling, we're going to get more turnovers throughout this game. Trent Luca getting another talking to from the referee. You can have penalty. Jack Johnson with the ball. We'll look to power this down the field. And to touch. That's oh, good crowd catch there. Into the second tier of the stand. it plenty in cricket but uh, attempts are made in many other sports as well including rugby Kodopalavi gets that one back just a little bit scrappy there not not quite to hand Koto has to try and swing it and tap it back with his inside arm it just leads to a bit of a scrappy mall formation then the and the referee's gone to the scrum That's of course Apeli Kotobalavu and uh, Viliami Kotobalavu, same surname. Rumour is it they're, they're brothers, but they're not. Uh, you know, we call them big and little. They're both pretty big. Um, but one gets sort of short wheelbase and the other one gets long wheelbase. And um, uh, then it's just not quite on the same wavelength there with that throw and the catch. But uh, it happens. We'll just go to scrum and, uh, and deal with it. Well, if you're going for nicknames, it's easier to say big and little than... Long wheelbase, short wheelbase. Saves you a bit of time. I think JJ thought they had too many players on the pitch then, but I think it's just because their blindside wingers come into the back line from the blind. Makes it look like they're overnumbered. Zealand move it out. Well, 
It's Ethan Shergold, open side for New Zealand there. Gerlach, to the backs. Oh, and it spilled forward. And the ref. We yeah, spoke whistle. about how much of a dangerous runner he was, and New Zealand are trying to bring him off his wing, create an extra man, have his footwork in the midfield, but uh, he's just spilled the ball there. Second half's looking a bit scrappier than the first, and you can see the forwards have now got starting to put hands on hips, and scrummaging is going to take its toll. So, you know, what we spoke about at the start of this second half, who's got the energy in the legs, who's got the most impactful bench is no doubt going to make a uh, make its mark on this game, especially if it just keeps going scrum to scrum. with the ball at the back of the scrum Has to evade and he does well there Forbes Johnson to Chambers here we go Imi Korowale Imi Korowale love to see it they're going to burn it down that right wing there Korowale a lot of defenders there though but he's got the ball back Mikey moves it into Mark Williams Mark running Williams. a broken defence it's a quick ball for UCAF plenty of guys on the edge screaming Open for it they're shouting for it out wide. It's Cam McDonald Good stepping feet, inside. Cam McDonald, can he make it? Uh, it's a fantastic oh, try there. Unbelievable, pick brilliant work. There. I feel like he's been doing it all tournament. Um, he, he looks like he's going to go on the outside and bang. He's straight back on the inside. Wonderful footwork there from Cam McDonald. I think that's uh, one of the things that Jack Johnson and I spoke about this week. If people are on the on the go forward, he's just going to put the ball into space and hopefully someone's going to connect there. Matt Dawson thought about it, but then sort of thought better not to try and interfere. It Bouncing ball, often people think it's a bad thing for the attack, but really it's, it, sometimes it just punishes the defence and uh, everyone sort of stops. Cammy McDonald's leached onto it there and uh, beat his man and, and got over. <laughs> got another change in the front row here Bubba Watson's done a shift for 56 and uh, and Bomed's gonna come on now Gareth Smith replacement uh, tight head and hopefully see us out for the next 25 minutes yep Gareth Smith coming into that critical position tight head prop the front row scrum Mark Williams with conversion attempt it's a lovely strike. Well, it's straight through the middle. Wonderful from Williams there. UCAF 24. Defence Blacks, New Zealand 12. Just under an hour played here in Van. 20 minutes, of course, of this second half. And we've seen both sides come out with real intent. Yeah, both want to play. UCAF want to play, New Zealand need to play, chasing the game a little. Uh, we've just seen it stutter a little uh, with a few handling errors. Um, but uh, we're underway again now and looks like Mikey's going to shape it to kick. We'll, uh, we'll soon see how the New Zealand deal with the ball and the, and the sun in the same space. What's up from McDonald? Certainly a tester there and it's spilled. I think that's gone forwards yeah. according to the ref and you know there we go there we have it you know you put the ball in the sky where the sun is and uh, and it's difficult to catch you mentioned Toby Papp, back row, sort of a semi-second row as you said earlier in your words. So it's great to see the depth in the squad, the likes of Kieran Forbes moving to number eight. Players at Cam McDonald moving off to wings, playing back three. Uh, Ryan Crowley in the centre there. Yeah, I think that's what you've got to build when you're a travelling team. You can't necessarily take a sort of uh, cardboard cutout of a squad you've got to have people that can move around people get injured and uh, you know people are on form off form 
And here we go, Corwale. Corwale, and he just spills out forward. Comes to Matty, New Zealand fullback, seeing what he can do. That's unfortunate. Ball's gone forward. He does it so well at times, you know, it, it, it allows him to keep the ball away from the tackler and, and invite your support runners into uh, for an offload. He saw him do it against um, against the RAF for the Army at King Tom earlier this year, and he, and he put our open side flanker in for a try, you know, but there it's just, it's not come off, whether it's greasy or whether the defence has got their uh, shoulder or arm in on the ball and just dislodged it, uh, whatever it is, but it's high risk, isn't it? And sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't. When you're coming at pace, those margins are just ever smaller. That looks like the uh, New Zealand tight head replacement number 17's gone down there. Dave Manning's looking to the uh, touch judge on this side saying, come on, blow your whistle. Taken quickly by New Zealand, but no, the ref calls him back. Another one for driving in at an angle by the looks of it. Dave Manning shakes his head. Even if he is wrong, I don't think he's going to agree. It'd be interesting here to see um, if UCAF are going to think about any more changes. Obviously, in, our, in the forwards, we have, we have got... Um, boys with hands on hips but both our second rows have played out, like all the minutes at the moment we do have Hutch on the bench who I thought had an amazing game against Spain be interesting to see get him on uh, actually it looks like him and Jerome are coming on now and I'm excited to see Jerome on the pitch this this will be his last ever game for the military whether that be Navy or the UCAF as he is out of the military after this tournament yeah, Sam Hutchinson second row and Jerome Rudder outside back looking to come on Alex Hayton makes his way off the field. And it looks like Imi Torowali's coming off as well. He's getting a few uh, pats on the back from the boys. Say, well done, thanks for your 60, 60 minutes. You know, that's, um, he'll be a bit disappointed to go off with the last thing, having been that knock on, but uh, he's had a good game and uh, he's looked dangerous with ball in hand as he normally does. Yeah, he's had a good tournament, hasn't he? Yeah, I think he scored uh, five tries against Spain. I spoke to him after that performance and asked how it was to score five tries and in his typically measured, relatively uh, softly spoken way, just said, yeah, felt good. <laughs> I'm sure it did. Nothing over the top. No, I think um, he's a really humble guy. You know, he's playing, he's playing professional rugby back in the UK um, alongside his slightly reduced army commitments, but um, a really humble individual who's got there through through hard work and um, and there's a lot of people excited to see what you can do in in both an army and a UCAF jersey in years to come. No egos in this UCAF side. It's a very tight-knit group. Yeah, definitely. None. So I think that's uh, all bar one of our subs now. I think uh, we've got another prop on the bench who might play a big part in the scrum in the last few minutes of this game. Of course, always a difficult one to swap out your captain, but um, we'll see what the head coach has in store for, uh, for Kai Beasley.
one thing um, us as a UCAF squad spoke about before this game was line speed and to be fair I don't actually feel like we're doing that at the moment we um we're letting them come at us a bit we, we said we can really exploit that we even said that we're giving our back rowers a license to go out and get the ball carrier sort of have a shoot and I don't really think I've seen that once so um hopefully something that's we improve on now but I think if we had a lot more line speed we would really kill um this New Zealand oh, attack that's, uh, uh, it's Tomasi there, Amira Tomasi, who's dropped that New yeah, Zealand fullback. Frustrating. Just as they were shaping up to go through the phases. I think Jay's actually spot on there. We've got clearly we've got a defensive system, and within that we've got uh, various trigger words that need to be used. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm quite a far uh, way away from the touchline, but we can hear what's going on on the field, and I, I haven't heard much of the uh, the sort of micro comms that should be launching those that line speed and those individuals. Um, so hopefully for the next sort of 17 minutes or so, the defensive leaders on the field, so seven and 12, um, or, or I don't know what numbers people are wearing because the shirts are all different sizes, but Matt Dawson and Mark Williams in those positions at the moment can, uh, can start introducing that system. A replacement for New Zealand, Josh Westerland, number 20 on for number four at Ben Gunn. He does not look comfortable. Walking rather gingerly there. Hopefully okay. Ben Gunn. Big shift in the heat. Scrum to set, just a chance of a breather for a few of the players. It's a very demanding day in the heat here in Van. A, a match that's been played with plenty of intensity and plenty of a, a attacking prowess from both sides. I think we can see down on the side here, Kai Beasley starting to warm up. Might see another change in the front row for these last few minutes. Yep, the ref blows his whistle. It's a UCAF penalty. Yep, Kai Beasley getting ready to come on for UCAF. Certainly can't be described as a boring individual, that's for sure. With a character, Kai. He's the life of the party. He um, unsurprisingly won Mr. Morale at last night's awards ceremony. Self-appointed. Uh, it wasn't, actually. It wasn't. Uh, it was a, a player's vote. Uh, oh, and here we go. Unfortunately, missing touch there. Perhaps Jack Johnson being a bit over-optimistic. Oh, Trying to make the tackle, but he's in the evade it. Matt Dawson doing his normal thing and settling things down with a good tackle in the midfield. And through the middle. Zane Douglas. Ball's been spilt there, unfortunately. Just gone forward. I think the New Zealand's questioning whether the... Uh, the tackler ripped it once uh, the tackle was actually made, having instead of having released. But the referee's not gone with that; he's gone with with a knock-on. Yeah, I think it was very close. It, it could have gone either way there. Well, here comes Kai Beasley. He's wearing the number four shirt. And it'll be the skipper Dave Manning to make his way off for 65 minutes. And Beasley to go into loose head prop in the front row. Congratulations to Dave Manning on a good game and a good tournament. He's been a, a real voice and a real talisman in that in that one jersey for the for the last month or so. Uh, you know, commands the respect of not only the RF players who know him obviously more intimately, but but the squad as a whole. Uh, UCAF stalwart, having been there in Japan four years ago, the previous tournament as well. Dave shows his age. Williams to Crowley that bounces off a few defenders Ryan Crowley and sidesteps his way down the pitch Johnson and that's uh, let's see what Cam can do here good feet and Cam also Cam McDonald trying to slip his way past New Zealand defence yeah we've managed to settle on this edge but that wasn't quite I suspect how we wanted it to go to plan. We probably should have got to that other edge and punched up the middle rather than 
trying to play in the midfield with a, a ball behind our, our runners off Jack. Unfortunately, he won't be happy with that. You know, normally such a good passer of the ball. And it results in us having to kick the ball away and possession goes back to New Zealand. It's a good follow-up from Johnson. Putting pressure there on his opposite number. That's a great line. Oh, that's a fantastic run there from New Zealand. And that's oh, a four pass. Pass. But that's oh, Referee's missed, missed it. it. Plays on. Uh, Johnson gathers. All a bit scrappy in the middle there. Yeah, it's... Uh, again, that's what we were talking about earlier. Obviously, um, the first initial chase is good. We've, we've caught there. We've sort of put them under pressure. But then everyone else on the, on the negative, on that wall behind, haven't, haven't connected and they've, they've broke through. How much more difficult does it make it to keep your composure, keep your shape, keep your concentration when you've reached uh, nearly 70 minutes out there in a uh, high stakes match? Yeah, inevitably it's it's a bit more difficult, but that's where our team managers and our leaders and our communication needs to step up. Uh, you know, use use the trigger words, that the sort of the one word that means three phases to everyone. So there's less say, less talking and less thinking to be done. Um, you know, and those game managers need to step up at this half, um, this back end of the second half. You know, and I think there's uh, if you run that last play right back to the start, the first phase was in the middle. Uh, you know, and we've got another 20 yards of grass that we should be stretching New Zealand into. We force Jack Johnson back with a an attack that isn't really set with any depth. We go backwards again. We then have to kick from the middle of the field bad kick chase and here we are back in our own half so you know we're just sort of compounding those little little errors time after time it goes through the hands of chambers yeah not forward as the ref calls it yeah a bit un uncharacteristic from mikey you know left-handed pass you know in good conditions not a problem for him but it's just a bit above ben there and um you know ben's trying to play at pace and trying to move forward onto the ball and just can't quite can't quite grab it. A couple of cramps out there, I think. It's Trent Luke at using the skipper. And Kieran Forbes is down there, I think, getting his car stretched out. Pre Madonna. Those are your uh, motivational words to him this morning. I, I always look out for my teammates. Or is that what you said just before he got his hat trick against Tonga? Like we keep saying to him, they were all walk-ins. He can't claim them. The argument of right place, right time only goes so far. Yeah, no sympathy for me there. he did mention his teammates Kieran Forbes when we showed him the footage and he talked us through it after that Tonga match and he did effectively say that right place right time but uh, brilliant performance from Forbes in that match yeah I mean all, all jokes aside uh, you know you want your back row in the right place at the right time don't you and you want them to be scoring points Douglas there in the midfield for New Zealand. On oh, Gerlach. But he's well taken down by Cam McDonald. And Shergold looks to offload. Johnson's got to be careful there. He's yeah. uh, the crowd saw him go for a little bit of a high shot. No shoulder, but arm certainly around the neck. It's New Zealand penalty as we approach the final 10 minutes of this match in Van. UCAF 24, New Zealand 12. You can see the intent remains with New Zealand's outside backs. They want to play. They want to get their hands free. Want to get behind our defensive line and put support runners into space. A couple of times there, which is, of course, the other side of the chop tackle. If you go low, you can't stop the ball getting out. So someone has to come in and uh, and stop that offload, whether, whether that's just by getting in the channel and stopping the ball or whether that's wrapping the man up from the top and, and putting a second man into the tackle. 
It, it'd be interesting to see what New Zealand do here. I, I don't really think they've had much opportunity deep in Newcastle 22. Obviously, they did have a line out on our five meter line in the first half, but they, they overthrow. So, see if they get any joy here. Beasley. Huge hit from Kai Beasley. A new calf with the ball now. Johnson boots it downfield. Yeah, that's really smart from JJ's. Ben James is outside of him, but there's a bit of defence in front of him. No one home, you know, so he just levers it and settles things down for these last 10 minutes. Forces New Zealand to go to the line out in their own half. I look forward to hearing about all that, hearing about that tackle from Kai Beasley on the bus on the way home. And New Zealand trying to find a way through here after the line out. Looks like Cotter Balabi's got over the ball, but New Zealand have somehow recovered it. Ball's gone a bit loose there. Handed up by Jared Deal. And Westerland. What can he do? Well, he's kicked it straight into Ben James's chin. There's not much chin there to kick at. He has got a very small chin. Well, whatever was there, it did the job. Ball went into touch. Referee's called us back. I think he's penalised Kota Balavu, who's... Uh, it's gone over the ball there, trying to trying to affect the turnover that referee's given it the other way. I think that's a bit unlucky, but you see it all too often nowadays. Uh, people's hands on the floor or not actually playing, making a valid attempt to pull the ball, and the referee just gives the benefit of the doubt to the attacking team. Obviously, you don't um, at this point now. As you can see, we spoke about earlier about penalties creeping in. This happened at the end of the game against Fiji that we started letting penalties creep in and. Then the momentum swung and Fiji started pulling away from us. I, I know we're ahead now, but if, if we keep this up, we, we can end up looking at a bit of a tighter game. So I think um, we as a team, you need to sort of buck our ideas up, let the sort of momentum slow, get back into the game and um, get back to how we we're playing in the first half. New Zealand, try sight, try line of sight, it should say. That's where the ball by Toby Papp there. Got a couple of guys down. I think that was quite a big collision. Referee stopped the game. Med teams on the field. over five minutes to play in this petite final as they're calling it at the IDRC effectively a third place playoff between UCAF 24 points and New Zealand on 12 the crowd building today Stanley building the final this evening France against Fiji and we've seen the Tongan team in the crowd and what appears to be some of the Dutch team as well can't mistake those bright orange Tracksuits and kits. Yeah, I think the atmosphere is only going to grow this afternoon as the uh, Fijian team arrives and the French team. Clearly, uh, you know, in the locality, that'll be um, flagged as a really big fixture. And I'm sure, very much like what we saw last week in the two semi finals, that there'll be uh, a big atmosphere again here in Vaart for, um, for this evening's final. Looks like Alex Hayton is prepping to come back on the field. Unfortunately, Viliami Kotobalabu is perhaps pinching his nose or somewhere on his forehead. Rightly being clapped off. Viliami Kotobalabu. Second row, Alex Hayton coming back on. 
very much like Dave Cotter's had a you know a very busy tour. He's been a big feature in our second row for for a lot of those a lot of these five games, and it's obviously sad for him to come off. Um, you know, with only seven minutes left, but um, he'll be happy having played a lot of rugby and. Uh, and well done to him and congratulations to, to Cotto and I hope whatever injury he's got isn't too serious. Yeah, we hope he's all right. He's just getting medical attention there. Good to love you. That's a great shove from UCAF. Put Jerome right. Mother into space. He's a great runner. He plays a lot of sevens, so you'll like to see some grass in front of him. Step past a few men there. Jerome Rudder on the wing. Yeah, he's um he's heading straight to the Philippines after this tournament to partake in the, uh, the Asia Games for Philippine Sevens international team. Well, it just shows the quality there in the side. So many guys heading to various parts of the world to play yet more rugby you can see the intent again from the from the kiwis they want to play Cam Gerlach making a lot of grind there finally dragged down just on that five meter line there TJ Oliver hands it out to Jared Deer the ref wasn't having any of that. I think Gareth Smith's upset there. He hasn't been able to make that tackle. Referees call it for crossing, rightly so. Bit of a let off for UCAF there. I think Kiwis have obviously got to an edge, got some go forward, punched up the middle, and they had something set either side. Um, and that's a bit of a bit of a let off. Jack Johnson will bang it down the touchline, and we'll go to our own line out. Lucia Tadaro getting in touch again. Super proud of David Manning, four Defence World Cups and still smashing it. Happy Cotabalavu with the ball. Ready for another UCAN fly night. I think four minutes left in the game, just, o just over 10 points up. I think this way you've got to be playing really, really smart here, obviously. Yeah, you want to keep building the scoreboard if you can, but playing smart rugby here and looking after the ball is what UCAF should be doing. Up goes Toby Papp, great carry over the gain line, presents that ball for Mikey McDonald to rip it out. Crowley just a bit behind Johnson there with his pass. Johnson puts it down in corner, but no, that's gone straight out in the foot. Yeah, again, we, t we talk about those fine margins. You know, we forced, we forced a kick and it's gone over the touchline on the full but we shouldn't necessarily be in that position we're having to kick to start with we should be able to put that pass to hand and get it to Jerome and, and get him on some front football again get him in the game get him going forward and yet here we are now defending on our halfway line he's gone back Josh Westerland but no you can have to retreat Offside in the midfield I think that's one of the first off cycles, certainly in the midfield, this game. Cam Gerlach. Good line speed there from Hutch. Good from Zane Douglas. Yeah, the referee's on the whistle. But again, you can see that from the New Zealand team. They've got two really dynamic centres. They want to get their hands free, tie up a couple of defenders and leave it into some space just behind for the uh, for the support runner. But unfortunately, it's just gone forward there. Uh, another get out for UCAF, go to the scrum. And I wouldn't be surprised if Jack, John and Jack Johnson puts, a, puts his laces through this one and tries to find some grass on the other side of the field. UCAF lead 24-12 in the closing minutes. Just under two minutes to play here in Van.
wouldn't surprise me if the front five forwards here for UCAF are going to try and scrum for a penalty. That's what they'll probably be speaking about here, and it sort of slows the game down. Laces. Spiral from Jack Johnson. Again. But it's in the full. That's a really tough, really tough one for the forwards. They've just gone from a scrum. They're going to go back now five meters for a line out. They did all that hard work. And unfortunately, uh, you know, the normally so reliable boot of Jack Johnson just hasn't quite found, uh, found the mark on that one. again Beery midfield Matt Dawson with a great chop tackle there you have shoved the captain back the two second rowers combining there to put a double hit in which is nice to see Tristan Reed New Zealand lock that New Zealand fullback's been been really dynamic today I think he's been engaged a lot he, to run some good support lines, played well with the hands on the ball. Oh, we could be in there. trouble here. 80 minutes. Could be in trouble here. Oh no, I think the ref's, the ref's gone forward. And he calls the there game. We well, it was a disappointing weekend last time for UCAF, losing to Fiji in the semi finals, but they've done the business today. A brilliant performance. Several tries against uh, a very strong New Zealand defence blacks opposition. UCAF. Coming out on top, 24 points to 12, and uh, a very pleasing way to end the International Defence Rugby Competition 2023 for UCAP. Yeah, really happy. Uh, you know, the boys at the start of the tour said we wanted to go home with something. Might not be gold or silver, but, uh, but you know, a bronze medal is great. And, you know, go back to what we were saying about looking forward four years. We'll, we should go into the group stages in a good position, um, being the third seed. And uh, everyone's, everyone will be really happy, and I suspect, without having to review that video, we'll just have a good time on the bus tonight and then uh, back on the ferry tomorrow. A full 80 minutes of a very tough New Zealand opposition. They were enterprising. They kept coming with those attacks right up until uh, the last minute there. Yeah, definitely. I think um, you have to well to nullify them. Obviously, you saw a few mistakes from New Zealand. Every time they got into a good sort of area, you might see a drop ball. Um, but as well you can say that you have very good a lot of the times they won a turnover I think that came from a lot of our back row players been very energetic around around the ball and um, when the turnovers there for UCAF but I think it is great to see great great to get a win great to get a medal and um, go home with smiles on our faces well I know you two gentlemen will be going down very shortly to uh, join the squad collect medals of course UCAF coming third in this IDRC but just before that just to Get a quick summary of, of what you think some of the uh, the best points have been on the pitch, uh, given the fact that UCAF uh, made up of three services, players playing very different styles, coming together, some of whom don't know each other really uh, to play with at all. Yeah, it was um, it was a challenge at the start. You know, three different styles, a coach from each service, and um, you know, not necessarily a huge amount of lead-in to uh, to our first game couple of days in in Portsmouth and then once we got off the ferry it was pretty flash to bang for our first fixture um, but you remember I spoke in our second game against Georgia about the the squad having the ability to apply different strengths and uh, sort of mitigate some different weaknesses to, to different opposition and uh, and we've worked hard in training in between the games to do that we've all come together under the under the one system um, that's evolved with us through the tournament and uh, I think what you've seen today there in, in for the most part is a really solid team performance we had a, a set piece that we were that we were happy to go to both line out and scrum which is really really encouraging and then at times we saw some really exciting stuff from our backs out in the, in the wide channels and um, it was nice to see that all sort of coming together at times today so uh, so well done to the boys down on the field there it's a, a good 80 minutes of rugby and I know you'll want to go and join them very very soon but a final word from you Jay about uh, just um, the, the coaching staff as well the medical team the backroom staff how important it's been uh, to, to have them with consistency the whole way through um, yeah, yeah no they, it's, it's gone really well um, obviously 
at the start we were all sort of a bit um, confused with the structure that we were trying to play. I, I, admittedly, I'll probably get in trouble for saying this, we didn't really agree with the structure we were trying to play at the start, but um, we sort of come together, we, we would keep drilling it into us, we made a few tweaks and changes from the coaching staff, what I think was a really good idea, and then um, we've obviously pushed on. Yeah we, yeah, we lost to Fiji, but arguably, I'd like to say that that was probably the final that's what i'm gonna say as a as being biased but i think fiji vs ucaf should have been the actual final and um but no it's been a really good tournament and like i said it is a uh, it's good to come out of a medal well, well played to the two of you to the whole ucaf squad we're just seeing the players have a, a tunnel of respect really and applause for uh, the new zealand uh, players as well and uh, thank you very much for joining me it's been an absolute pleasure and cool comments with the two of you over the last uh, number of weeks thank, thank you, you Sai. cheers thank you i've loved every minute Well, the players, full of respect for uh, for each other after this uh, very intense match once again in the heat in Van in Brittany. Brittany having been uh, a wonderful host to this IDRC, the International Defence Rugby Competition. And all the local people who've turned out in the stadiums and all these games. And the UCAF players and coaches very appreciative of that. All the support that we've seen online as well for all of you joining us with our live coverage thank you to every single one of you and for those getting in touch it's been great to hear from you wherever you may be in the world for those in new zealand we hope of course you've managed to get uh, a coffee or, or something to keep you up as uh, you've been keeping up to date with today's progress I hope you get a bit of a bit of rest now the players are just uh, doing a lap of honor around the pitch uh, applauding the crowd for those supporters, both of UCAF and New Zealand, also neutrals, and indeed other teams, Tonga, the Dutch here as well, the Jeans and the French will be here preparing for their final later on. And UCAF uh, just in the huddle at the moment, reflecting not only on today, but of course the last number of weeks. We see how close knit the UCAF rugby family is. Engaging in some, some song there. They've had some very difficult times indeed in the last few weeks with the tragic passing of Stefan Rees. And the players have come together. Rugby family has united. Indeed, players, staff from other teams have also come together in their support. That was a disappointment last weekend for UCAF. But here they are after a win. And we'll have a listen to some of this song. in prayer and reflection but what a match they've played today they knew it wouldn't be easy a New Zealand side that was beaten by France last weekend but that UCAF were unanimous in saying they were impressed with their performance they did score two tries against France on Sunday New Zealand and they didn't come out as victories but uh, UCAF winning 24 points to 12 got a few tries in their performance and the heat and conditions are something the players have, of course, got used to in the last few weeks. And uh, they too, just like the Defence Blacks of New Zealand before them, applauding all the fans who have come out to watch here in the band. It's been a good turnout for all the games, starting off with a pretty comprehensive win over Tonga. And a very close encounter with Georgia done in breath, a very physical match, we got winning by just a few points, 21. And it was on to Meles, where 20 tries were scored by the UCAF boys in beating Spain 128 points to 3. And as you may have heard earlier, from J2 Good and Will, it uh, was a very gracious defeat from the Spanish, they appreciated the quality of UCAF play. In Fiji last weekend, well, 41-29 to the Fijians, very strong side. But the players, uh, both sets of players now, 
uh, taking a breather after a very, very intensified matches. So we'll, of course, stay live for the presentation of these medals. Not only the players, the referees, of course, have played their part, ensuring that the discipline has been there through the tournament. Absolutely key, of course, in these high stakes matches. Make sure everyone's playing the right spirit, and well, it has been. It's been a tournament. It's been played in great style. And the players there, some of whom are limping a little bit, uh, walking a bit gingerly. Hopefully they're okay, of course, and we'll be looking forward to an ice bath. Well, if you can look forward to an ice bath, we're certainly looking forward to some treatment. I'm hoping uh, to get some rest on those oh, what must be very tired limbs at the end of an intense few weeks here in France. But uh, the crowd standing, applauding. They recognise the quality of rugby they've seen. They've been very grateful to come to these matches and see fantastic try score. A lot of points generally been put on the board in most of these games. A lot of them have been close as well. And teams from around the world. You must forget the travel involved for some of these players. We've spoken to the Tongans just after their match. And we're saying they travelled three days in the South Pacific. New Zealand, Australia also from that neck of the woods. And we've seen Uzbekistan. And the Dutch are here as well. Spain, Ireland, Japan. Of course, they were the hosts in 2019. Uh, UCAP lost to Fiji in the final. And high winds forced that venue to be changed for the final in Japan. Thankfully, this time around, it's been lovely late summer, early autumn weather for the players to enjoy in their downtime and also be able to benefit from in the style of rugby they want to play. Open rugby. Now it's we just see the players lining out here. We have presentations to the referees. And the New Zealanders play their part in this tournament. Coming fourth. And UCAF, of course, in, in third place. Winning this petite final of the championship, as it's known. Not a single member of the crowd who hasn't been applauded. The players complete their their laps. And uh, joining the New Zealanders out there in the middle of the pitch again. And some of these players will be going home. And some players going very shortly, as you may have heard earlier, to other parts of the world, the US, the Philippines, to compete some other matches and tournaments it just shows the level of skill in this squad level of depth as well and the variety that we've seen we've all been very blessed to enjoy fantastic rugby from mid-august so we just await the medal presentation it's a nice touch of course for all the players at the end of the time in France. Something we can look at and always remember. And the dignitaries, well, they make their way out towards the halfway line. Yet another way in which the unity of the sides and indeed those attending the games has been on display right throughout. And the referee, his assistants, 
all walking up to receive their mementos. Having taken part in this IDRC, International Defence Rugby Competition. Dressed in light blue tops, of course. New Zealand in their white tops, unlike what some may expect, having known the way the All Blacks play and black most of the time. They get ready to line up. Trent Luca, the captain, will lead his players towards that line of dignitaries. And it's been great having all of you New Zealand fans joining us for this coverage. Thank you very much for getting in touch on YouTube and Facebook. We know the effort you've gone to. The time difference will be the middle of the night for you. Exact science, making sure the right number of medals are there for each of the players. And they're being ushered up now in New Zealand. Can't look at just making sure that he uh, he leads the skipper. And a very special moment. For all involved. wasn't to be for you calf in relation to winning the championship but they'll undoubtedly be hugely proud of their efforts today and it'll be a wonderful moment for them to collect their medals just lining up behind New Zealand staff at the moment mentioned it being great to see fans young and old it's also great to see support staff and indeed uh, relatives and children as well as we can see there it's part of the New Zealand support entourage not seemingly picking up a medal but undoubtedly a huge out of respect. And as captain, it will be Dave Manning, of course, to lead the UCAF boys up to pick their medals. A real stalwart of this side, a veteran, having been at several previous international defence rugby competitions. And having led the side admirably admirably over this last few weeks in France. Will Reeve and Jay Toogood now with the players, of course having been co-commentators, sharing a few jokes, probably telling the boys they gave them well, 10 out of 10 for their performances, staying on the right side of things. And just behind them there with the shades, it's Justin Coleman, JC, head coach. And he's got his assistant coaches, B. Ponamasi and Tim Oseman. Bruce Smith, team manager. Kev Briggs, S&C coach. Tom and Annabelle from the medical staff too. 
New Zealand lineup for their photograph. Some more traditional cameras there. Some mobile phones too. It's the thing, isn't it? As a player, you want to get it up on social media as soon as you can. And applause for New Zealand and the wonderful part they've played. Congratulations to them at this international defence rugby competition. First of all, Ben Watson, Gareth Smith, getting his medal. Hooker James Roberts, back row Toby Papp. Fellow back row, Matt Dawson there in the number eight shirt. And the actual number eight from today's game, Max Bolladau, number 25. Sola Drau, Radiana Rova, they get it sevens player two. Big Blavu, feeling the heat. Amy Korowale, number 14. Viliame Kospalavu, hopefully he's okay after what appeared to be a bit of a knock to the face. Mikey McDonald, followed by his brother Cam. 21 and 11, respectively. Special time for them as brothers. Jack Johnson. Understandably known as JJ. And Jerome Rudder. Ben Chambers. Fullback today. It's Alex Hazen. Followed by Sam Hutchinson. And two lanky second rows. Kieran Forbes, big unit there at Blindside. And Ryan Crowley, who played in the centre today. We've so often seen him in the wing. Joe Parkin was vice captain today. He's followed by Mark Williams, who we saw taking place kicks. And Kai Beasley, wearing the number four shirt. And there's Albizo de Sump. Man of the cow behind him. Wayne Davis follows. And a nice touch from the UCAF boys. They're getting the driver. They're getting the, the man who's taken them all around Brittany over the last few weeks out to join them. And a nice moment. And CJ Too Good receive his medal. Nathaniel Titcher Jones. Will Reeve. And some of the coaching staff as well. So time to savor the bronze medal. All well, the players just getting ready for their uh, for their photographs here in van. chance for the dignitaries to say a few words of encouragement to the coaching staff as well. Well, a top end for UCAF after a big few weeks of rugby. The bronze medalists at this international defence rugby competition. We've enjoyed every single moment being with you for this live coverage, not just of this match, but all the games here in Brittany, from Fougere to Brest, Malès, last week in Rennes and Nauvan. And it's thanks to every single one of you, those who've got in touch, those who've been watching from home, those at the stadiums as well, those who've maybe come out from different parts of the world to support the team here in person. And uh, it's thanks to every one of you for joining us. It's been a real pleasure. Don't forget, you can catch the uh, start of the Inter-Services Rugby League on Friday on Forces News. 
and you can also, of course, keep up to date with all our sporting action on forces.net, our website, and social media as well. And we're just watching as the New Zealanders join UCAF. What's well, a very special photograph, very special moment. The team's coming together. A moment that won't ever be forgotten for all of these boys. And indeed kids, as we can see at the front. And that brings our coverage to a close today. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Join us for Inter-Services Rugby League on Friday. And it's a very special goodbye. Merci. Venez, euh,